Go Fly Fix. Today we're going to look at the first lesson on the syllabus, which is the operation and the effects of the uh, controls of the aircraft. At the moment we have the aircraft stable, in balance, flying along. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the stability in the pitching plane. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply a little bit of back pressure, as you can see on the instruments. Up we come, nose comes up, it's been displaced. The nose is coming back down as we briefed in the classroom. Come down a bit further. And it will come back up again. What we can say is that the in the pitching plane, the uh, Cessna 172 is stable. We'll look at the ailerons now. If I just do a shallow bank of around five degrees and let the airplane go, there it is, it's set there. It's just gonna continue to bank around at five degrees. The aileron in the roll, Caution, terrain. it's fairly stable. If I go over that five to 10 degrees, the aircraft wants to continue to bank. It gets steeper and steeper and steeper until eventually we end up in a spiral. So after the 10 degrees, we would say the Cessna 172 is unstable in roll. If we take a look at the balance ball, I displace the rudder, we're out of balance, and I let it back go. Because of that big fin area, it's straight back into balance, so stability in the yawing plane is very stable. We'll look at the operation of the controls one by one. The first one we're going to look at is going to be the ailerons. Again, we're sitting here nice and stable. If I just roll the aircraft using ailerons alone, we get a roll rolling, now you can see the yaw and a slip, and that continues, roll, slip, yaw, roll, slip, yaw, without any input, and we start to lose altitude. So the primary effect of ailerons is roll, the secondary effect is a slip and a yaw, and eventual spiral. We can have a look at that to the right also, so right, rolling with ailerons, we have the roll, it's starting to yaw, it's starting to slip, and we're going to go to the spiral. So recovering, rolling back right to the wing. The next one I'm going to look at is the elevator. I'll just get the aircraft restabilized. So again, we're sitting here nice and comfortable, hands off, it's all nicely trimmed. If I apply back pressure, the aircraft pitches up, so the primary effect of elevator is pitch. The secondary effect is airspeed as it starts to decrease, and the RPM's dropped off. If I push forward, it's the opposite. We start going down the hill. So pitching forward with elevator, airspeed increases, RPMs increasing. The primary effect of rudder is yaw. I'm going to apply some left rudder. Applying left rudder, there's the yaw. Because the outer wing is traveling faster, it creates more lift, it creates a roll and a slip. And eventually, again, we go into another spiral. Looking at that to the right now, aircraft stable, right rudder, there's the yaw, there's a right roll, there's a slip, and eventual spiral, which is what we don't want. So we've looked at all the primary and secondary effects. Primary effect of elevator is pitch. Secondary effect of elevator is a decrease in airspeed and RPM. Primary effect of aileron is roll. Secondary effect is a yaw, a slip and a spiral. Primary effect of rudder is yaw. Secondary effect, again, is a roll, a slip and a spiral. So that's the primary and secondary effects of the primary controls. What we have next is the ancillary controls or the secondary controls, one of which will be uh, the throttle, which is shown here, and that controls the power of the aircraft or the RPM. The primary effect of um, Power is on indicated airspeed. So if I bring the power back, the airspeed is starting to decrease. The secondary effects you would have seen is we had a little bit of a yaw, which was a slipstream. The nose is pitched down and it can lead to a roll. Bring the power back in, pull power, the 
the aircraft is going to accelerate, we're getting faster, it's now pitching up, and due to the slipstream we're actually starting to yaw a little bit to the left, very gently, and now it's starting to roll. So the primary effect of power is indicated airspeed. The secondary effect is the slipstream over the tail, which causes a pitching moment and a yawing moment and eventual roll. What we'll look at next is the trim. So I just want you to imagine you're handing onto the control column. I start using the trim, which balances out all the controls. Winding forward, winding forward. The pressure's getting there. I'm trying to keep the elevator where it is. I'm holding back. I've got a lot of pressure on my hand. If I let go, whoa, down we go. I use the trim to neutralise the control forces and keep the aircraft nicely in balance. Likewise, if the trim's rolled backwards, the nose wants to pitch up, so I'm pushing forward, pushing forward, pushing forward, holding quite a bit of force forward. If I release that force, the nose is going to pitch up. Bringing the aircraft back to stable, holding it there, trimming off the forces. That's the um, primary effect of the trim. I'm just going to slow the aircraft down into a slow cruise at 1800 RPM. We're going to look at the effect of flap. So with the aircraft trimmed in a slow cruise, I'm going to lower 10 degrees of flap, which is mostly lift. It wants to pitch the aircraft up and the airspeed decreases, so I have to apply a forward pressure to counteract that. Now that I've counteracted that, we're still flying fairly level. What you'll notice is we've got more visibility, we're actually looking further down and we're a little couple of knots slower. I'll lower some more flap, I'll go to 20 degrees. This time I'll preempt it, I won't let it to pitch up. So lowering the flap, there's 20 degrees. Forward pressure and trim. The nose is lowered a little bit further. The airspeed's decreased a little bit further, so we're going to a slower cruise. Going to 30 degrees of flap, preempting the pitch moment, pushing forward, re-trimming. We're again a lot slower now, at 60 knots. Still maintaining altitude the greater perspective out the front. We've increased the RPM, that's dropped off a bit as we've slowed down. Now that we're flying along with 30 degrees of flap, when we want to lift the flap we always have to do it in stages. So the same way I put it down we would bring it up. I'm flying along fairly even and balanced. If I lift all of the flap at once, the aircraft wants to sink and we lose quite a bit of altitude, which wouldn't be very good close to the ground. Caution. Sink rate. There we get the warning. One of the other ancillary controls is the mixture. We use that mostly on our navigation exercises. What we can do is we can, through the vernier, we can wind the mixture out, which reduces the amount of fuel going to the engine, especially when we're at up higher at altitudes. It makes it more economical. We'll have another look at that when we do start our navigation training. Carburetor heat over here, if we get into icing conditions, there's a bit of moisture around today. And if we had a temperature of 10 degrees or less, we could get icing into the carburetor. We do that, this deflects warm air from around the exhaust shroud through the carburetor and mounts any ice, uh, melts any ice. It gives a slight decrease in RPM. On the uh, throttle control, we can move it. If we need a more active movement of the controls, we can wind off the throttle friction, and it's a lot lighter to use. Keeping the friction on gives you a little bit more control of how much input you want to put into that. The basis for the fuel system in the Cessna 172 is we have a left wing tank and a right wing tank. Looking at the fuel gauges, I can select left and just run off the left. I can select right or just run off the right. 95% of the time, we're going to leave it in the both position and run off both tanks.